3.5, dividing polynomials, and today we're going to do synthetic division. We did long division in the previous lesson, and I'm going to show both of them at some times while we're doing this work today. I will explain a little further in the lesson why we're using these dividing techniques and what they're going to be most useful for, for us as we finish the lesson on polynomials. So when you're using synthetic division, um, the first thing you want to do is look at what you're dividing by here. And we're dividing by x minus 3. So if we're dividing by x minus 3, then what you want to do is set this equal to 0. And if I said this x minus 3 was a factor, then you'd say x equals 3 is a 0. right? So I'm going to use um, 3, x equals 3 here, in this side of the equation, we're going to make an upside down dividing sign. That implies synthetic division. I put the 3 from that one here, and then I write out the coefficients only of these. Now you have to make sure that it's in descending order, and you have to make sure that you have a place setting for each one like we did before. For instance, if there was no um, minus 7x here, I would have to put in 0x. Okay, so I'm going to write 3 minus 5. Leave some space under here because you need you need a little row here as well. Minus 7 and minus 1. So I've set this equal to 0. I've written that number here. So make sure you're changing the sign. Then I write out each of the terms here in this uh, polynomial. So now the first thing I do is I bring down the first number, 3. And then I do 3 times 3 gives me 9. So I'm going to write that in here. So it's 3 times 3 gave me 9. And now I add these together, these two numbers, minus 5 and 9, and I would get 4. And now I do the same thing again. I'm going to do 4 times 3. I guess I could put that one here too. 3 times 3. So I do 4 times 3, so still times this one. 4 times 3 is 12. And now I add them together and I get 5. And I do 5 times 3 is 15. And I add them together and I get 14. So now I'm finished the dividing. And what I do is this number here. This is going to be your remainder. The number here is going to be your constant and we're going to go up by one exponent each time. So this is going to be your x, and this is going to be your x squared. So I would get, um, I'm going to write it out as a division statement. So 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1 is equal to what I divided by, x minus 3 times. Now I have 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 plus 14. That's my remainder. Okay, so if you had used long division, now let's just do long division. It's really fast to do. You're going to see we get the very same answer, but this method is quite a bit faster and you're probably going to want to use it more often. Okay, so let's write this out quickly. And the first thing I'm trying to get rid of is 3x cubed. So then I would have to multiply by 3x squared. Note that's the same number I'm getting here, my 3x squared. So 3x squared times x is 3x cubed minus 9x squared. And I subtract and I would have 4x squared. And then I would have to say plus 4x. I multiply, I bring this down first, sorry, minus 7x. And I would get 4x squared minus 12x. I subtract, I get 5x minus 1 plus 5. And you can see I'm getting the very same answer, 14. So they are the same. Um, this is going to be much faster for you. Um, this is obviously takes a little bit longer to write out, but you're going to get the same answer. And we also need here that x is not equal to 3. Don't forget, you need a restriction as well. Okay, so 
that's all fine and good. Let's do a couple more examples till you get the, the knack of it. Okay, so this one, 5x cubed minus 7x squared minus x plus 3. So I check, I have 3, 2, 1, and x to the 0. And here I'm dividing by x minus 1. So that means the 0, if this was a factor, would be x equals 1. And I'm going to write that here. Now if you think about it, if x minus 1 is a factor, then this should divide perfectly into this. There should be no remainder. So in this example up here, x minus 3 cannot be a factor because there is a remainder. So that's going to be important when you're trying to factor your cubic and quartic functions. Okay, so again, I write out the numbers. So 5 minus 7 minus 1, 3. I bring down the 5. So this is so much faster, right? So I multiply, I get 5, I add them together, minus 2, minus 2, add them together, minus 3, minus 3, add them together, 0. How fast was that, right? Okay, so remember, I'm multiplying by 1 here. So this was times 1, then add times 1, add times 1, and add. So remember, this is your remainder, this is your constant. So when you divide by x, of course, you're reducing this all by each of the exponents by 1. So that would give me this division statement. Let's write it here. So I have 5x cubed minus 7x squared minus x plus 3 is equal to, so I multiplied by x minus 1, and I ended up with 5x squared minus 2x minus 3. No remainder. So to finish this off, if I asked you to sketch this function, you have one of the factors and now you have a quadratic. So you would need to factor this next. Uh, is it factorable? Let's see. So we're looking for a product of minus 15 and a sum of minus 2. And maybe you can think of that right away would be minus 5 and plus 3. Okay, so remember these don't go right in here. You have to make two fractions with the first on the bottom. Okay, so let's, um, oh, I don't leave much room over there. Let's, I'm just going to rewrite that over here. Product of minus 5, sum of minus 2. So minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. Minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2. So my two special numbers are minus 5 and 3. Quick way to factor, you divide by the first, which is 5 here, reduce, so I have minus 1 over 1, and 3 over 5. So that's the end of that, and that gives me x minus 1, 5x plus 3. Now if you didn't catch that, if you go back to the grade 11 curriculum, um, there is a lesson on factoring there that you should be able to find. It's in the first couple of chapters, I believe. Um, lots of good um, factoring skills there to review. Okay, so because this x minus 1 was a factor of this, that's why we had this 0 here. So if you get a happy face 0, that means x minus 1 is a factor, and x equals 1, of course, is a 0. So if I were to um, finish this, I asked you to graph it, then you should be able to make a quick sketch. So we have x minus 1, x minus 1. So that's the same thing as x minus 1 squared, right? So that means this is going to be a root of order 2, or a double root, which you might have called it before. So at x equals positive 1, I have a double root. The leading coefficient, so you have to remember all these little things that you've learned already. The leading coefficient is positive. It's a cubic function. So positive means it's going this way right? My other 0 would be at minus 3 over 5. So let's say that's minus 1. Uh, it could have been a little further over. Say so this is minus 1, this is 1, minus 1, and I have a 0 at minus 3 over 5. So minus 3 fifths. That's going to be my 0. So my function has to start in this quadrant. It's going to go over here. It's a double root, and so that would be a pretty decent sketch for that function. Okay, let's look at ones that are a little more tricky, and this is when 
sometimes you might want to go to your um, long division. And that happens when you have a coefficient in front of the of the um, x here, so 2x plus 3. Now you might say right away, well, that's pretty easy. I probably just, uh, you know, solve for x and I would get minus 3 halves. And that's right to start with. But you have to think that if you started with, if I had something like, let's say, 8 over 4, um, 8 over 6, let's say, that's the same thing as 4 over 3, right? So if I divide the divisor down here by 2, and I divide the dividend by 2, then that's still a legitimate math, right? So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to write out these again, 2x plus 3, and I'm going to write out this 6x cubed, 5x squared, minus 16x, minus 15. And I'm going to divide this by 2. Everything's going to get divided by 2. 2, 2. 2, 2. So when I simplify this, I'd have x plus 3 halves. So x is equal to minus 3 halves. That's what I'm going to divide by. Now don't get all upset because it's a fraction. You can do it. So I'm going to write minus 3 halves here. And this, I'm going to divide each of these by 2. So 6 over 2 is the same as 3. 5 over 2 is 5 halves. I should leave some more space under here because I need to do the multiplying. So I have 3, 5 halves. This is going to be negative 8. Watch, make sure you keep the signs with them. And minus 15 over 2. And now I'm going to do the synthetic division part. So I bring down the 3. Remember that's your first step is to bring this down and then I multiply by minus 3 halves. So times minus 3 halves is minus 9 halves. Now I add these together, and 5 minus 9 is negative 4, divided by 2 is simply minus 2. Okay, you can double check that on your own. And minus 2 times minus 3 halves is going to be 6 over 2, and 6 over 2, of course, is 3. I add these together, I get negative 5. And I multiply this one times this one. So minus 3 halves times minus 5 is 15 halves. And I add them together and I get 0. Now, this question is from um, page 166 in your textbook. They do it a very difficult way and I found it very confusing and hopefully, um, I don't know why they made it so hard because this is all you have to do. So now here we go. We've got, um, we had a zero here, which meant it divided evenly into this. They said it was a factor. 2x plus 3 is a factor. So if it is a factor, you're going to get zero. And that's going to be covered as well in the very next lesson. So um, we'll, re we'll look at that again soon. But this has to be 0 if it is a factor. So now I'm going to say, okay, I have um, 6x cubed plus 5x squared. So I'm writing out a division statement here. I'm just saying what this is equal to. And I'm going to skip down to this line. So I had 2x plus 3 times, and now I have this. 3x squared, and this is squared, x, 5, and that's my remainder. So now I have these two, so this is already factored, and I want to factor this. So again, it's a product of, did I just do the very same question? Let me just see. No, it's not the very same. I thought for a second it was the very same question because I have the same thing here. So I have a product of minus 15 and a sum of minus 2. And again, that would be minus 5 plus 3. So minus 5 and 3. And my first number here is 3, so I just put that over these and I simplify. So here's my two factors. So I have 2x plus 3. And again, if this is 
like what are you doing Miss Havrat? you can go and check the factoring lesson in grade 11 curriculum. Okay, so this is x, the x is on the bottom, the other on top. So 3x minus 5, x plus 1. That's all you have to do. It's so simple. Factoring, don't let your teacher make it difficult for you by making, you know, that really long method. I forget what it's called. Okay, so here we have everything's factored. If you expand this, you will get back to this. So now I can tell you what the zeros are. So the zeros are what makes each of these brackets equal to zero. So x is going to be minus 3 halves. This one, 5 thirds. You're in grade 12, I don't need to write that all out, right? And minus 1. So a quick sketch here. I'm just going to do a little one so we don't run into the space. So I have minus 3 halves. Let's say this is minus 1 minus 2 plus 1 plus 2. So I have minus 3 halves, so that's minus 1 and a half. I have minus 1, that's right here. And I have 5 thirds, which is 1 and 2 thirds. I look, look at the leading coefficient, so this brings back your one of those first lessons we did. It's positive, so it means it's going like a positive slope line. I'm going to start in this quadrant, I'm going to end in this quadrant. Each one of these roots, this is also important, each one of these roots is single. They have an exponent of 1. That's a single root, means you pass right through the axis. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to come back down, and I'm going to go back up here. Now if you wanted to be more accurate with your graph, you could find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0, and you'd see this number has to be minus 15. So this is going way down, but that's okay. This is a sketch. Okay? So um, let's try another one of those tricky ones where the coefficient is not 1. So again, the easiest way to do this is to, we're going to divide everything by 4 because we want this to be an x. Just like if I asked you to solve for this, you'd say it's 3 quarters. So 3 quarters is going to be what we're going to divide by here. But as we do that, I'm just going to put a little 4 under everything here. 4, 4, 4. And I'm going to write out the coefficients here. So this is going to be 1. This is going to be minus 43 over 4. This is going to be, we could simplify it, but I'm going to leave it as quarters right now in case they all end up being quarters. Oops, what did I write? It's going to be 66 over 4 and minus 27 over 4. Now this is the same question. I think this is supposed to divide out evenly. Let's see what happens. So we bring the 1 down, synthetic division. Okay, so... That means if you thought about the long division, if I said how many times does 4x go into 4x cubed, you'd say x squared, right? 1x squared, so it's right. And now I'm going to multiply by 3 quarters, so I get 3 quarters, and I add them up. So minus 43 quarters plus 3 quarters is minus 40 over 4, that's minus 10, right? Can you do that in your head? You should be able to. Okay, times 3 quarters again. That's minus 30 over 4. And I add those together, and I would get 36 over 4, which is 9. This is dividing out beautifully. And then I multiply by 3 quarters again, and I get 27 over 4. Add them, I get 0. Look at that happy face. That means that was a factor. So right now, I have that this... 4x cubed minus 43x squared plus 66x minus 27 is equal to 4x minus 3. So we had that factor already. And then here, remember this is your remainder. This is your constant. So that's plus 9. This is your x minus 10x. And this is your x squared. Now, and you should be able to factor that pretty quickly. What multiplies to 9 and adds to negative 10? 
it would be minus 9 and minus 1. So because this is a simple trinomial, coefficient is 1, I just do minus 9, x minus 1. And a quick sketch of that graph. Um, we didn't say what x is not equal to here either, did we? It's so bad. x is not equal to 3 quarters. And I think we missed this one up here. x is not equal to minus 3 halves. Okay, back down here. Let's find the points. So we have 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's say this is 9. We have a negative 1. And we have a 3 quarters. So there's my zeros. Again, it's a positive leading cubic function. I have to go through, they're all single roots. So I'm going through, I'm going through, and I'm going through like that. And there's a quick sketch. Okay, so that's synthetic division. Um, please look at page 166 in your textbook. And um, maybe I should tell you not to look there because they make this so difficult and it really isn't that hard to do with this technique. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at here is a question you're going to see in your homework assignment. And it says the divisor is this and the quotient is this and the remainder is this. Find the dividend. Okay, so let's write out what these things were anyway. So we had a divisor which divided into the dividend right? Dividend. And we got the quotient. So you have to know where these things are. So we've got a D, a D, a Q, and a remainder down here. So if I want to know what this is equal to, the dividend is equal to this times this plus this, right? You can do that really quickly. Let's say um, 4 divided into 9 is 2 so 9 is 2 times 4 plus 1. So the dividend, which is equivalent to my 9, is equal to the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. So dividend, I'm going to write that here. Dividend is equal to quotient. There's several questions like this in your, your homework assignment, so I thought I should do one just so you've got it in your notes. So quotient times divisor plus a remainder. Now all you have to do is plug those numbers in, expand and simplify. So they want you to find the dividend. We've got it on the right side. If they gave you other parts, you could just rearrange the equation, right? So the quotient, so I have x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 6 times 5x plus 2 and then I'm going to add negative 2. So this is just an expanding and simplifying kind of question. So I have um, 5x to the fourth plus 2x cubed, uh, 20x cubed, 8x squared, minus 25x squared, minus 10 x plus 30 x plus 12 minus 2 and let's see we've got 1 x to the fourth we've got 2 x cubes so that's 22 x cubed I hope I'm doing this right I'm doing it kind of fast minus 17 x squared plus 20 x plus 10 okay so that would be hopefully the, the correct solution to this expanding thing. I think I did it somewhere a long time ago. 22, 17, 21, and uh, 21x. Did I make a mess here? 21x. Maybe I did it wrong the last time. That's 20 minus 10x and plus 30. I think I'm right this time. Okay, if you see a mistake, let me know. Um, it's not the end of the world, it's just a simple expanding. What's important is that you can kind of write out this little equation using some simple uh, example and use that to uh, plug in numbers and expand and simplify. So that's the end of your synthetic division lesson. And next we'll move on to um, some work where we're going to be actually factoring lots of polynomials and sketching them. 
all for now. Bye.